Hello everyone! Guess what? One more technique of integration. What we're going to see this week is a new method for evaluating the integral of rational functions, which is called partial fraction decomposition. So in this video I'll give you a motivation for the method, in the next video I'll define what the method is about, and in the third video we'll work through an example together in much detail. Alright, so suppose that you want to evaluate the integral of 1 over x squared minus 16. No big deal, we know how to do that. We just use trig substitutions, right? So we're going to define in this case an inverse substitution x is equal to 4 secant theta. And then we just work through all the details of the trig substitution. And if you do everything correctly, you should end up with the result 1 over 4 times the log of x over square root of x squared minus 16 minus 4 over square root of x squared minus 16 plus the constant of integration. So I leave that as an exercise to work through the details here, but this is what you're going to get. But here's a question. So we start with the rational functions of x, which involves no trig functions whatsoever. And our final result also does not involve trig functions. But somehow, to do the calculation, we needed to introduce trig functions. So the question is, could we do it without trig functions? Is there a more direct way of starting here, evaluating the integral to get the result, without having to use trig substitution? Turns out that the answer is yes. Let me show you how. So what I'm going to do is pull a rabbit out of the hat and do a little bit of magic. All right, so let me get, let me get started. So I'm just going to start by rewriting the denominator as a product of two linear factors. So x squared minus 16 is equal to x minus 4 plus uh, times x plus 4. So far so good, but here's where the magic come in. So what I'm going to do is the following. I'm going to rewrite the fraction here as follows. 1 over 8 times 1 over x minus 4 minus 1 over x plus 4. Crazy. Now are these two things the same? That's a very good question. Let's just prove it. So I'm going to start with the result and show that it's equal to the line above. So 1 over 8 times 1 minus 1 over x minus 4 minus 1 over x plus 4. So what I'm going to do here is put everything on a common denominator. So if I put the two terms here in a common denominator, I get x plus 4 minus x minus 4 over the common denominator, which is x minus 4 times x plus 4. And that's where the magic is. X's cancel out. 4 minus minus 4, that's 4 plus 4, excuse me, 8, cancels with the 8. And I end up with 1 over x minus 4 times x plus 4, which is indeed what I started with. Great. So this is exactly equal to this. But that's fantastic, because this is really easy to integrate. So what I have to do is just the following. So I'll first factor the 1 over 8 out, and then I just split the integral into the sum of two integrals. First one just the integral of dx over x minus 4. Second is the integral of dx over x plus 4. But both of those are easy to do. What I get is 1 over 8 times the log x minus 4 minus the log of x plus 4 plus my constant of integration, which I could rewrite as 1 over 8 log of x minus 4 over x plus 4. So that works. What I've done here is start with a rational function, integrate it to get the result without having to introduce trig substitutions. But I had to pull a rabbit out of the hat. I had to do a little bit of magic here. So that raises a few questions. First, are the two answers equal? I first used trig substitution for to evaluate the integral. I got this crazy looking answer. Then I used this little trick of mine, and I got this answer here. Are the two answers equal? Well, by now you should have learned the lessons. If you get two different answers for the same integral, they must be equal up to a constant. So I will not prove that here. I'll leave that as an exercise, but you can indeed show that they are equal. It's just a matter of manipulating logarithms here. Second question. How did I actually know that this fraction here was equal to the sum of two fractions? If I know the answer, then I can prove that it is true. But how did I come up with this uh, answer first? That's a very good question, and 
Question three, can I generalize this method to integrate arbitrary rational functions? Can I generalize this little trick, little magic I did, for arbitrary rational functions? Well, the answer is yes. This is exactly what partial fraction decomposition is about. So partial fraction decomposition is a method for starting with a rational function, arbitrary rational function, and rewriting it as a sum of simpler rational functions. And it's very, very useful for integration because, just as in my example, the integral of an arbitrary rational function may be quite complicated, but once you have its partial fraction decomposition into simpler rational functions, then the integral becomes much easier. So in the next video, I'll define what partial fraction decomposition is, and in the third video, we'll work through an example together.